Tosh Rock. Let's go. Let's freaking go. That may be the biggest one I've had yet. What's going on everybody welcome back another episode of blue water life we are uh, in the bay right now um actually have we're looking for some bait we'll see if we can run into some pilchards i still have probably about two dozen pretty decent decent pretty decent size uh pilchards from last from my last trip i kept them uh penned up at the house but we're gonna run over to one of the spots i grabbed pilchards at about a week ago i don't know if they're gonna be there or not but um we'll give it a shot and then if not we're gonna run out uh, and try to grab some ballyhoo and hopefully we can get them pretty quick here because we got a couple hours it's gonna be a short trip today uh plan is we're gonna do some drifting i have all my bottom rods i have my flat lines we're all set up and ready to go so my bottom rods i have pen the spin fishers 8500s um with about 70 feet of monofilament leader on them. And then I have my flat lines, which are 30 pound fluorocarbon uh, on a pen at 6,500. So we're gonna see what we can get into here. Um, hopefully we're we'll running into some bait, like I said, before we get out there, but we'll see you guys in a few. Ooh, a little herring. Got him on, baby. Ooh. Ooh. Those are some chunky ass baits right there. puppies to the bottom look at that bait look at that bait that's what i'm talking about right there look at that thing send this bitch to the bottom clip it Let them on down. This bitch out there. Oh no, it's going off to this side. All right, now hold up one second. Let me explain what's going on here. So we're drift fishing today. The goal is to get a drift sock out and then four lines, two flat lines and a bottom bait. So we got a flat line right here off the, off the bow, a bottom bait, a flat line, and then another bottom bait. So typically we would drift uh, with the drift sock and it would keep all the lines clean. But the issue is there is zero current today. So all of the lines are actually wrapping back towards the stern of the boat and we are not moving. So typically when there's no current, it makes fishing and drift fishing really tough. Uh, Barracuda. Nice. 
nice little coot in there. We're not gonna keep this guy. a couple hours and no luck I got sharked really bad um, I got that one barracuda so <clears throat> we're gonna try to save the day here it's about a three mile run we're gonna head out to the hump see if I can get a tuna and then probably on the way home uh, get up in the tower and just, just roll back and see if maybe we'll run into some mahi mahi there's a lot of weed out here and it's pretty flat so um, let's head on out to the hump we'll see you guys there get them on just put some in the boat there. Always pick up one piece of trash while you're out here. There it is. Let's see if we can mark some fish out here. Just gonna drive around, check out the sonar, and then figure out our drift. See if we're drifting over, if we're drifting last summer, drifting this way. It all depends. And it depends if they're there. All right, we're about to go over it. See what we're marking here. Come on, tuna fish. Yeah, they are. They're deep, the 250s. I don't know what our drift's like, but we're gonna toss one down now. Better sink. I'm trying to keep it vertical as possible here. Right? All right, let's give it a go. Oh, there it is, there it is. <laughs> yeah, baby. No, no. Fell off. Fell off him. No. Ah. Ah. Ha, ha, ha. No, he fell off. All right, let's reset. All right. Give it another go here. There we go. Finally. Ooh, baby. Come on. All right. Whew. The shark. No shark. There we go. Come on. Come on. All right, come on, that's a good boy. Good boy. Please. Oh no, Benito. No, no, no. Yeah. 
It's not. Whew. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. a good sizer. Come on. Come on. Come on. Got him. Finally. There's a butterball. Ooh, baby. Let's go. Let's freaking go. That may be the biggest one I've had yet. Woo. Look at that. Ah. Look at that size of that thing. Uh, Just bleed this baby out. <laughs> Rain him, bleed him. Uh. All right. Let's bleed him out. There he is. Let's go. Uh. Huh? Yeah, like probably 200, 250. Yeah, I, I try to let it go all the way, but the current kind of takes it this way, so. I missed a bunch, but this is the biggest one. Yeah. Alright guys, so we end up getting this black fit. I'm be interested to see how much it weighs, but I mean look at the size of that thing. Um, we got it on a salt bath, uh, an ice bath, so I like to put the salt water in here. Make sure it's really nice and cold. So one of the guys out here gave me a tile. Um, he had a he hit limit, so we're gonna try that too. But that was a solid black fin. All the crap fish ended up paying off today um, and we caught that nice blackfin tuna. So we're gonna head home. Uh, we're gonna actually go through Miami uh, Inlet and then we'll see you guys back at the house. Oh, let's get her tuna. It's been all nice all night. Ah. Ooh, baby. Where's he at? Oh, baby. Just try not to make a freaking mess. 
this. All right, to the fillet table. Ooh. Okay. Look at that big dog. Let's see, how heavy do we think this guy is? Be surprised. Let's so. Uh, Whoa. He is dun dun dun. Ooh. Eh, about 13 pounds. Not bad for off the jig. And we're gonna use this guy. Oops. Cut here right behind the peck fin. Look at the size of that thing. These things, when they go through the water, you can see how fast though they'd be. And then they actually tuck back in here for like aerodynamics. You can see kind of that fin line has this line right here, the size of that eyeball. But we're gonna cut here right behind our peck fin and then work our way against the rib line. Go way all the way back to the back. And then we're gonna cut up under against that. Now I'm gonna work my knife here right across the ribs. You can hear them. Kind of do the same on the other side here a bit. And then once we kind of got this fillet released here, I'm just gonna grab it, working my knife all the way up. Both sides, and there you go. Look at the size of that fillet. Whew. All right. Let's do the other side. That's a nice piece of sashimi right there. Same thing. Repeat this on this side. Under the ribs. Down the backbone. It's kind of a tough spot here. Kind of hear the knife run up those ribs, grab it. There we are. There we go. Another nice fillet. See, I mean, I missed a couple pieces here, but shit. Come on now. Some nice chunks of tuna. Look at that. Ooh, baby. Whew. All right. As always, let's look in that belly. This is the stomach right here. And he is... Pretty freaking empty. There's not much of nothing in there. A couple fish. That's it. Pop the eyes. So he sinks and then let's throw him down. Whoop. And the plan here. I like to run my knife, so I actually use this as a an eight inch flex knife. So I'm gonna run it. One, I'm gonna cut that, that rib line out right there. And then I'm gonna take this knife and kind of work it down the bloodline here to release the filet. And then now I'm just working it back and forth. Trying to make sure we get as much of this filet off of here as possible. So, there you go. Look how clean that is. Nice, big tuna filet right there. I'll do the other side here.
There we go. Another nice, solid tuna chunk. Feed that baby. I'm just gonna do the other side. All right, so I never rinse them in fresh water because they'll get super mushy. So all I do here, I'm gonna wrap these babies up. That's not even gonna fit in the bag. Wrap them up here. Uh, a little bit of paper towels just to get the moisture out. And get these babies in a Ziploc. They fit. You may have to cut them in half. God. Oh, oh, come on. There we go. Let me fit. All right, we're going to put these in the fridge for a little bit and let them kind of stiffen up. And then probably going to do some sashimi and a little bit of poke bowls. Oh, see you guys in the kitchen. All right, so we're in the kitchen. We're going to do uh, a little bit of seared tuna and then some, some, some sashimi, which is my favorite. Um, by far, so I got all the tuna right there in the bag. Um, we're, gonna, we're gonna take out a nice chunky piece here. Look at the size of that thing. My goodness gracious. Oh my god. Oh yeah. to get that paper towel off of it but so we're just gonna cut the bloodline off you can see it right here and then we're gonna get some nice pieces so I'm gonna cut up the nicer size of this for sashimi and then the rest of it we're gonna sear in the pan right there let's do it we're gonna do a quick wash just be careful the longer it's wet the more it starts breaking it down so get that moisture off and then I'm just going to cut that bloodline off of that fish like that. This is like the gamey part of it, so we're not going to eat that. Let's see. Look at that. Ooh. Ooh. So, we are going to feed that to the fish. This and this side, I'm going to blacken these two, or I'm going to sear them. And then these are going to be cut into some sashimi. All right, we've got our plate here. Look at that. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ooh, talk about lunch right there, baby. Thick, I like the thick chunks of tuna like that. So these two, we're going to get the pan really hot first. We get soy. And a little wasabi. If you guys have never had eel sauce, this is the way to do it. So, we're gonna wasabi, the plate there. Okay, we got some wasabi. And then these, what I'm gonna do here is ugh, kinda soy these over. There we go. Sesame seeds. We're just literally rolling them. Oh yeah. Look at that. Mm -hmm. There we go. There's a nice piece. Alright. 
perfect. Our pan is not hot. Get that thing super hot. Gonna put a little bit of oil in there once it's hot and then sear both sides really quick. In the meantime, oh yeah. Little eel sauce. Oh yeah. This stuff is sweet. It tastes like money. Let's get it in there. There we go. Got our one piece. Whew. All I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna let them sear. Just uh, enough oil under there. We're just doing enough. Sesame seeds pop everywhere. All we want is a nice sear on all sides. All right. Here we go. Those are cooked, done. Pan is off. Would you look at that? Oh yeah. What I'm gonna do here, just slice these babies up. Oh man, if I had a better knife, this would be way better. So look at that. Oh yeah, oh yeah. Lunch is served, I mean, so these are sashimi pieces, look how thick they are, but wasabi, this is an eel sauce, it's super sweet. If you've never had it before, I definitely recommend it. We got our soy sauce, and then these, look at that. Seared nice on the outside. A Little bit of cold on the inside. Just cooked through, but mm mm, -mm. So, we're gonna try this. We're gonna do it in a little bit of soy, <clears throat> and a little bit of wasabi first. There it is. Look at that. Oh. Oh. The wasabi. I hit the wasabi first. Ooh, right up the nose, but oh man, that's good. And then we're gonna do look at that tuna. And a little bit of eel sauce. Down the hatch. Mm, I could eat that every single day. Oh my god, so good. Mmm. Oh. But. Well, I'm gonna eat the rest of this. Thanks so much for watching, guys. Uh, there's more fishing and boating videos on the way. This is Blue Water Life. Mmm. Oh, you want some? You like tuna fish, right? Mm -hmm. See you guys later.